Because we were muted, that's why. hey Audio test. That's a bit loud. Thank you for joining me, and welcome back to LEGO Worlds. Down. Good like that. Hey. Alrighty. Alrighty. Down to 59. 59 decibels. Or something. Gain. Stuff. hey Alright. And the camera's already dying. Good thing I brought two extra batteries. Holding this the right way. hey Let's turn it down some more. I don't know what this is. It's just kind of this dead-end path out in the middle of a business park. Not really in the middle, it's on the edge. There's nothing back here. They're probably gonna build something eventually, but in the meantime, they're man manscaping, landscaping some very nice uh, Microsoft Office default wallpaper. Just for me, all for me. I got a new car. I missed the old car. Its name was Road Rash. It was so fast and red. I had it for five or six years. I only paid $850 for it but it finally gave up its will to live. It got me through college, it got me into my first job. That's pr really much all I can ask, more than I can ask. Didn't really have a lot of trouble with it either, except for that one time that a wheel came off while somebody was driving it, but it wasn't me. Anyway, the new car's great, I love it. 2008 Volkswagen Rabbit, gas mileage is better, it has a sports mode, and it has these neat little anchor points in the, in the trunk area that I can attach bungee cords to and keep all my stuff just kind of tucked away over to one side. Really good, I like it. But it's missing one thing. I need to customize something anything. For a while I was looking into options to maybe paint something big on the side. I really I really regret not painting something on my old car because it, it had a trash paint job anyway and I ended up selling it for scrap. But this car has an actual nice paint job so I didn't want to trash the resale value by painting all over it because for some reason most people don't want a giant pineapple on the side of their car. I don't understand it. So I thought about it. I was like is there any kind of peel off paint that I can get because they have that but it doesn't last very long, it doesn't age well, it's supposed to be more of a temporary. I even contacted a company that sells like giant wholesale sheets of car magnet material so I could just cut out the shapes that I want, but I figured compound curves. But then I had to change all the brakes on my car so I spent a lot of time around the wheels and I noticed it has these little plastic covers uh, that go on the center of the wheel to cover up the, the lug nuts. And those little plastic covers uh, had a garbage paint job on them to begin with from the previous owner. So I'm like, I can't lose. So I'm just gonna scrape this off, paint what I want, and then when I go to resell the car, it'd be easy to just sand off my own paint or paint over it. So let's paint some lug nut covers. So these things, when I got the car, had this uh, this red paint on them. It's like a, a rubbery paint that kind of peels off, and then under that there was a black layer of something, and under that there was this silver layer of something that whoever painted it with their black stuff and the red stuff really should have sanded off first, but they didn't. So I'm, I'm trying to get all that off. I got the red layer off, and this is pretty much what it looks like when it's been sanded down. Really nice and smooth. Okay, I lied. It's not smooth at all. But I think it's good enough, because once we paint it and everything, uh, it's fine. It's good enough. But I need to take the, the evil, angry, spiky brush and just kind of get all the rest of this off of here. The wire brush on the power drill definitely was just a touch aggressive. It, uh, it honestly tore up the things pretty badly. But that first night, I was just really in a rush and I was kind of frustrated with some stuff and I just kind of was letting out some aggression on the artwork, which is a great thing to do, but it's fine. Lately, I'm really trying to embrace character in art. Let the art have character. Let it have quote unquote flaws. Let's get rid of all the weird little dangly bits. Felt like I was cleaning a small child's ears, but I don't recommend using this tool for that. <sighs> all right, it's good. Beautiful. These things are gonna have to be popped off the car once in a while. And when I took these off my car, I had a really hard time getting them off with the screwdriver and I scraped up the paint that was on there pretty badly. So I'm gonna cut a little notch in each one of these uh, to make it easier to fit the screwdriver in there and pop them off. And that way I don't have to worry about damaging my own paint job. That looks pretty clean. Now the next problem is these middle parts. It's gonna be hard to paint a good picture on it when it's not flat. It needs to be a little bit flat, somewhat. I mean, this, there's just too much topography going on here. I'm gonna just kind of smooth this over, have a smooth surface. Then we're gonna try to fill it in. And we've done this before on this channel. We've tried to fill things in with glue that we wanted to be flat. It didn't go very well, but we're gonna try again. In order to make sure the glue gets a good bond, we need to really rough things up. To do that, I'm gonna use this angry boy. <laughs> that is not something you want to brush your teeth with. So I went and bought some glue from the store and I poured it in the things and I filled them up and it leveled out really nicely and I was like, cool, I'm gonna come back from work 24 hours later. Hopefully it'll be mostly dried and I can paint. 
That didn't happen. They didn't dry at all. It's it's slightly thicker, but they're still, it's, it's not good. So we're gonna try something different tonight because uh, this would probably set up eventually, but I don't have eventually, I have tonight. We're gonna use hot glue. We're gonna try hot glue. Hot glue dries faster. Issue is, uh, it's gonna be hard to get it to dry level. Hot glue didn't work out so great either. It was really hard to get it to level out. It was just pretty challenging, not great. I would not recommend it, but I did end up finding a way to make it work. Okay, that's not really working, but I just had an idea. What? What if I put it in the oven? I don't recommend putting glue in your oven at home, children. Boys and girls, do not do that. But I did, because I am an expert moron, and it worked. Whew! That was an experience. Uh, so don't leave your hot glue in the oven for too long. It starts bubbling up like crazy. I put it in this big, uh, this big metal vat that I have for reasons. Well, first I put it in for way too long, and it started bubbling up. And I was like, oh, that's good. That means that means the little, little air bubbles in the bottom are rising to the surface, and it'll get a better bond on the. No, I don't know what was happening or where that air was coming from, but it just really crazy. I should have filmed it. I didn't film it, but I finally ended up working it out. I would put the glue in with the glue gun, and then while it was still hot, I would stick it in the oven. And they turned out okay, except for the first one that mostly bubbled over and turned into a wreck. The next step is to paint it. I got some Rust-Oleum brand paint. It's a real bright blue, slightly green word of blue. The thing about a white car, everything on this car is white or black, which means whatever color I put on it, is gonna pretty much become the dominant color of the car. The original paint that was on these plastic pieces was red, and that's the first thing you see when you look at the car. It's black and it's white, and it has red details. That's that's the color scheme of the car. So I was kind of changing the personality of the car by doing this. Wait for the FedEx plane to go by. I just use basic acrylic paints. I got them from Walmart, Apple Barrel brand. Uh, I got the gloss ones. I was trying to figure out what colors should I buy? I don't even know what I'm gonna paint. I just wanna paint some stuff. And then I had the idea, if you know your colors well enough, you can buy these five colors, black, white, red, yellow, and blue. You got your primaries, you got your black and white. And with those five colors, you can mix them and make any color you can think of. I started with the body of the pineapple. Originally, I was gonna just kind of have them centered on the wheel and the top of the pineapple would be at the top and the bottom would be at the bottom and you'd be able to see the whole thing but when I started painting I was I realized if I want to be able to put enough detail in as much detail as I want I'm gonna have to zoom in on these things make them a lot bigger and just kind of cut off most of the picture but I think it ended up being better that way it was more creative and interesting this the the darker yellow did not go exactly as I was hoping it would it started out great I think I should have stopped I think I should have stopped early on where I just had the shading on the left side. I didn't stop, I kept going. Then it was time for the leaves. That was really, really hard to get right. <laughs> it took a few tries. I've drawn pineapples before, obviously. I just tried to kind of tried to imagine where the leaves would be as I was painting the light coat. And then I had to go in with the darker color and paint in the shadows and actually differentiate all the shapes so it's not just a silhouette. It was challenging, it was hard. And I probably should have planned it out beforehand, but I'm glad I didn't because it turned out great. There goes another plane. I don't have time for this. All right, here we go. We're gonna we're gonna change things up a little bit here. Hey, I can't see a thing. It's time to tell some ghost stories, apparently. Where was I? Um, I don't know. The composition is great. The spines are okay. Leaves, fantastic. There's one last touch that I want to add to these pineapples. 
there's just something really nice about painting things on things because uh, you're gonna get artwork that no one else has whatever it is you own you're customizing it in a way not with stickers but when you paint something it not only displays your own personality but it makes it an image that no one else in the world has and you can even duplicate exactly if you wanted to a couple of coats of lacquer or something clear that I sprayed on it a couple of coats of that later and we've got some artwork to show off Thank you for watching. My goal in making this video and most of the videos that I make is to inspire you to make your own artwork. I want to see you guys make stuff. Paint something. Just pick something you own and paint something on it. It doesn't have to be good. It doesn't have to be great. It doesn't even have to be good enough. Just paint something on it to make it unique, to show off your personality. Do it. Take pictures. Send them to me. Topplenot at gmail.com. If you do it fast enough, I will share them on the channel. You can get your artwork displayed on a YouTube channel that has like four, 400 ish subscribers. Most of them have left because I'm not making gaming videos much anymore. I want to see you make stuff. If you want to see me make stuff, subscribe, share this video with your friends. I've got videos I'm working on, I promise. Besides this one, I've been working on stuff. But like I've got one video that's 13 hours of raw footage that takes a while to get through. Got another video that we just wanna film some extra footage for to make it even better. But I wanna make more stuff. Thanks for watching. Keep being creative. And I'll see you next time.